You know, the striped beanie is a classic, but the problem with a striped beanie in crochet is that you usually end up with one of those unsightly seams at the back. There are ways that you could improve those seams. I have a video on that, but I'm going to avoid a seam if at all possible. And I have found a way to do that. It's a very common way, but not everyone may know it. And it starts right up here. This is the secret to doing it. So this is what we're going to make today using the camel stitch. And we're going to start with this traditional two color hat, but once you understand the technique, you can make three colors as I've done in this one. It's October right now, so I was feeling rather Halloween-y. Or you could even do more colors if you, once you understand the concept. So let's see what we can do. So I'm going to do this hat with a number four worsted. This is Premier Basics, one of my favorite 100% acrylic yarns. This is the color Pumpkin, and this one is the color Crepe, or Crepe, if you want to pronounce it properly in French. I'll also be using a G hook, which is a four millimeter. This is what I like to use, generally speaking. You don't have to. If you've seen my video on how to properly size a hat, then you know you can use any combination that you're comfortable with. So let's get started. And one other important note is to grab two stitch markers. We're using two different color yarns, so you're going to need to mark in two different places. We are going to create 10 half double crochet in that circle, but we're going to use not one color like this, but we're going to use the two colors that we've chosen. Now, the way we're going to do that is we're going to do half in one color and half in the other color. It's going to look slightly different than what we're used to seeing in the one color. So let's go ahead and create that. We're going to start by pulling out some yarn from both colors because we are going to start right away working with both colors. We don't do it one row at a time as you may do in regular striping. Okay, I like to start with something I call a simple start, and I do have a video on this if you don't catch it first time with this, but basically you are laying your yarn right over your hook, and you take this tail and put it in the back, and hold it against your hook, and then chain. One, two, three. There are many advantages to using this start, so, um, you don't get that knot. It, it works exactly like a magic circle. So here we go, making 10 half double crochet in this very first chain down here. We'll be doing five in this color and five in the pumpkin color. And you know what? It doesn't really make any difference which color you begin with. Not at all. So half double crochet, if you're not familiar with it, begins with a yarn over. And then you insert it into that stitch, yarn over, pull through one, Yarn over, pull through all three. Okay, so that's your first one. Yarn over, insert the hook, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through all three. That's two. And you continue doing that in the same spot, like that. Three, four, five. I don't know if you can hear Buzzy, but I have to go check. I'm afraid she may have brought something in the house. Okay, so we're back and we have five half double crochet. That's half of our circle done. And you're going to notice that this circle is opening up a little bit. And it's supposed to do that. This is the beauty of having the ability to um, pull tightly and close it at the end. Uh, just with one little tail yank right here. So it works exactly like a magic circle without the complicated memorization technique that I've never bothered to implant in my brain. So let's go on and add the next color. Now we're just going to attach this color. We're not going to work it in as part of a previous stitch. But first, what we need to do, we're releasing this color. So let's leave a nice big loop so we can find out where to come back to put our hook when we're ready to start that color. And it won't, it, it also keep us from yanking the stitch out, so that's good to know. So to complete our row, we gotta add the color. Insert your hook into the center, like that, and pick up your new color, put it over your hook, pull it through, so you got a little loop sticking there. Find your working yarn and chain. Okay, that'll secure it on there a little bit. Now see how loosey-goosey all this is? That's just part of getting started. You can close up that circle by pulling on this tail. 
See how that got tighter? And then you can pull on the other tail. Well, hold everything. There you go. Pull on the other tail to tighten it up there. Okay, and of course you can tighten it up later as well. So it's not like now or never. Okay, let's do two chains. One and two. This will serve as our very first half double crochet in this color. So that's the first stitch. So now we do a half double crochet into the same spot just like we've been doing. And this will be stitch number two. Okay, stitch number three. And stitch number four. And stitch number five. Okay, and you can see that we have somewhat of a circle going on right here. Where's that tail? Here it is. I'm going to pull tightly to close it so that helps. It doesn't look as neat as a one color one does because it has sort of a gap between the colors, doesn't it? But you know what? It's going to take care of itself as we continue on with the project. So now let's go ahead and make practice of using these stitch markers every time we finish a row. So in the very last stitch that we completed, go ahead and place one of those markers for that color and this color. All right, now before we proceed, let's look back at this regular circle in one color. All right, going back to what we're familiar with, if we were going to do a regular striped BD, what we do with this row is in the color by inserting into the first stitch in the round and doing a slip stitch which was joined to the top of the first stitch. That's what we just did. Okay, let's pull that a little tight. Looks nice, doesn't it? Okay, well we're not doing stripes that way. We're going to do continuous rounds. Now lots of times, even if I do a one color hat, I'll do continuous rounds so that I can avoid a seam. And what that looks like is instead of actually joining to the top of that stitch, let me put that last double crush, I mean half double in. Instead of joining to the top, I'll just continue on and do what I normally do. So in this case it would be half double crochet two in the first stitch because we always increase that way for top down hats in the very same stitch. We would do that, right? Okay, that is more along the lines of what we're about to do, but when it's camel stitch, we will be using the bar in the back. We won't go in right here. We will go into the bar in the back, which is there. Not here, but here. Let's take what we just learned here and apply it to our two color hat. Now, as far as the increases go on a top down hat, they're exactly the same. So we'll be putting two stitches into every, st every stitch that we've already done. So there's five stitches here. We put two in each. So we're going to have 10 in this color. We're going to have 10 in this color. And we'll have 20 when we finish. That's the exact same as if we were doing a regular no frills hat. So if you forget which one is the very first stitch, you can count backwards. Five, four, three, two, one. One is kind of falling forward because remember this one was the one we had to do for chains. So let's see where we're putting things. This is where your regular stitch would be made. We'd put our crochet hook right through there. So that's leg one and leg two right there. But we don't want that. We want that to fall forward and look behind it. There's a bar right there. So that is where we're going to insert it. Trust me, this gets so much easier to see right after this round. It will just be clear as a bell. Right now we've got to tough it out. Getting started is always the hardest part. Okay, so we're doing half double crochet. So let's yarn over as we always did. And then insert right in that loop we found. Yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through, two, all three, and then repeat it. We have to put two in every stitch around. Okay, so there's our two for that one. So now we got to see where to put the next one. Five, four, three, two. We're going in this one. 
We kind of squished things up a little bit, didn't we? So here's the first leg. Let me pull it loose so it's not squished. That's not where we want to do it. Leg one, leg two. We're going to the back, which will be this bar right here. See? Leg one, leg two, and this bar right here. Remember, getting started is the hardest part. So do your half double crochet one and your half double crochet two. And now we're looking at the next one. It's getting a little bit easier to see. First leg, second leg, and there it is right there. Yarn over, insert the hook, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through three, and then do it again in the same stitch. Now we got this one, getting easier to see. First one and second one. And then we're here at the last stitch that we marked clearly. Okay, so we're going to take that out to do our last stitch. Pull this little loop thing out of the way so you can clearly see the V, leg one, leg two, and then there it is, that bar on the back. And we do the two half double crochets, one and two. Okay, so we finished with that one. We're going to pull out that extra and mark our last stitch, which is right there. Boom. So we pick up the orange stitch, this pumpkin, and we're going to continue row two because remember, no row is complete until we've done both colors. So we're continuing to do the exact same thing, two stitches in each of the camel humps in the back. Okay, so there's the fifth one, four, three, two, one. This is the stitch right here. So we have the first leg and the second leg that we're used to looking at but we want to move those out of the way and find it the bar in the back, the hump in the back right there. So that's the one we want. Okay, so we're going to yarn over and do those half double crochets right in that hump in the back. One and two. Okay, repeat that in the next one. And again, you can see how it's getting easier to see. See, there's the stitch, but we want the, line, the bar in the back. So I'm going in there. One and two, two in each stitch. Okay, bar in the back. Now we're cooking, because this is so much easier to see once we get away from that very beginning center. And then we got that one right there. One and two. And remember that our marker is marking the last stitch we have to do. So let's take it out. And there was the stitch, so there's the bar. One and Okay, we still don't have a perfect circle, but can you see how it's beginning to get more circular instead of looking just like, you know, two chunks? We're pulling it together. All right, so come do everything we need to do at the end. We just pull out that loop and mark the last stitch like that. And now we're on to row three. So for row three, we'll be making 30 stitches in the entire round. We had 20 in the last round and we're increasing by 10 each round. The way we do that is a pattern of three stitches repeated 10 times throughout the round. Two in the first stitch followed by one by itself. So for row three, let's see what that looks like. So much easier now. Okay, here's the last stitch, very evident. And then this will be the next one, continuous rounds. Okay, so what we need to do is two in the first stitch. This is called an increase in crochet terminology. And then one in the next stitch by itself. There's the regular stitch. This is the bar. And just one stitch in that one, okay? 
repeat. Here's the next bar. Two in this one. One and two. And one by itself. Two in the next one. One and two. And one by itself. I really don't need to be doing every little stitch with you. I realize that. <laughs> but I'm just getting you started. Increase in the first one. And one by itself. And you'll be able to run from here after this row. Okay, two in this one. And one by itself. Which means that I have to take the marker out so we can easily get to that bar in the back. Give it a little tug and you can make everything stand up correctly. There's the one by itself. Okay, pull out your loop a little bit so that you don't accidentally undo that stitch and replace your stitch marker in the last stitch that you did right there. And continue on with row two by completing the second color. And again, it's easy to see where the next stitch is. Here's the one we just completed. So here's the next stitch. Whoops. And there's the bar behind it. So we yarn over. One and two. And then we do one by itself. And you can continue on in this pattern of three for row three, one and two, and one by itself, and I'll meet you when you get to the marker. I'm on the last set, so that would be one and two in the same stitch, and number three, oops, remove that marker to get it out of the way. Number three goes in by itself. Now you understand the importance of the marker because it's kind of hard to tell where to stop. Pull out so that you don't accidentally rip out that stitch and place the marker in the last stitch. Okay, now we're moving on to row four. Row four is the same exact principle. We do a pattern of four stitches repeated ten times throughout the round. Two in the first stitch, followed by one by itself, and another by itself. I know you probably have this figured out by now, but just in case, let's do another one just for good measure. Okay, row four, we're putting four stitches, a combination of four stitches. So it is two in the first one, one, and two, same stitch, and then three goes by itself, and four goes by itself. Okay, so you're going to do that all the way around in both the colors, and I'll meet you back when we get to this. Okay, coming up on the end of round four, so that's one and two at the same stitch, and three by itself with the marker and four by itself. Okay. So how do you know when you stop making these increases? Well, that's when the diameter of this flat circle matches the size of the hat you want to make. And how do you know that? You look at a hat sizing chart. This is the hat sizing chart that I've used for years, and I have a uh, link in the description box below so that you can download it and keep it with your crochet stuff, too. But here's how it works. Here's how you read it. For instance, I want to make a hat that is 6 to 12 month old size, okay? That means that the head size is roughly somewhere between 16 to 19 inches. Babies vary. This is just kind of an average, okay? I don't have a baby in front of me to measure, so this is what I'm going to go with. Now, 
hat size itself would be if you measured your finished hat so this is a little bit irrelevant I think I don't I don't know why this information is here but some people use it um, hat height is important to us but first this flat circle diameter needs to come into play and this is for all top-down crochet hats so if I'm doing a six month six to twelve month old hat I'm going to follow across here and know that I need my flat circle diameter to be roughly 4.5 inches luckily for us crochet is stretchy it doesn't have to be exact so what I'll do is put my little flat circle down there and I'm going to measure across okay straight across and I see that mine's roughly three inches maybe a little over three inches I'm not there yet so I'm going to have to do another increase row and now you're catching on to how to do an increase row as I've, I've taught you in this video so you'll know that for row five you're going to have to have a pattern of five stitches two in the first stitch three four and five all by themselves and you'll continue on in this process until you reach the desired width for your flat circle diameter your desire measurement for the flat circle diameter once you reach that then we'll put one stitch in every stitch around no increases I don't want to waste too much time on basic hat construction because that's all it is if you need more help I'll link this video in the description box below okay I'm back and I have reached my desired measurement I measured from crown all the way down to the edge I was going for five and a half five and a half inches and I'm there and I also made sure that I ended half and half just as we started as a matter of fact now the easiest way to finish this off would be to just taper the ends down taper this one this way of course and this one this way and you'll get something that looks like this one where half the hat has gray at the bottom and the other half of the hat has blue at the bottom so this is what those sides look like if you have any preference do you want to see what that looks like you may also choose to do an extra solid round of one color like I did on this one I have maroon in which case you're going to have just one little blip on the side that looks something like that but either way we're going to have to taper so let me show you how to do that so picking up that first color again pulling it tight now remember we've been doing half double crochet here right so now what we're going to do is make shorter stitches so let's use the same back loop the camel stitch loop and do just single crochet let's do about three of those two whoops no yarn over and three and then let's slip stitch because that's the next shortest stitch and I'll do two or three of those I think I need to do three okay and now you can kind of see how it's tapering down to the shortest point so we can go ahead and cut this one pull it through and then we will sew that end in and you can see as I pull it it'll taper even more so that's just what we want so now I'm going to repeat that process on this side we've got the half double crochets so we're going to do three singles so that's one still in that back loop because we're making it as a camel stitch and three and then we'll do three slips one two and three now if you are happy enough with this taper and you like it the way this one did where you have two colors one in the front one in the back that are different you're ready to go go ahead and cut this and sew your ends in but if you'd like to have this solid color border all the way around the way I did this maroon and white one then we'll have to backtrack a little bit instead of doing those last slip stitches one two three find where you left off with that single crochet and do that all the way around to this point and I'll meet you back so you'll single crochet in that third loop that camel stitch loop until you get back to this point so 
So I'm coming back around and I'm getting to the point where I did those single crochets and they look different from the half double crochet stitch. You see how it's easy to find that back loop right there? So what I'm going to have to do is just really work a little harder to get into the, the back loop. It's still there. See it? It's right there. One leg, two leg, and there's the third leg right there. It's just a little bit harder to get into, but I'm still doing single crochet in that third loop. It's just a little trickier. Okay, now these were the slip stitches. I'm going to leave those in just as they are, and I'm going to hit that whoops I'm gonna hit that loop of orange right there I'm gonna pull it up with my hook see if I can loosen it some still doing single crochet into that loop of orange or pumpkin as they call it single crochet and then I'm going to continue one more single crochet and then I'm going to slip stitch to taper it off. Three slip stitches seem to be a good taper point. Okay, so if we turn it around and look at it, that's what it's going to look like. This of course will be sewn in. And that'll be so neat. So here's the finished project and uh, it came out really well. And you can see this looks pretty stiff right here. Remember this yarn is Premier Basics but it comes out really flimsy when you put it in the wash. It's a wonderful yarn. Wash and dry. So there's that. And then you'll have this one little hiccup right here in the back where you joined it. But that would be the back of the hat. So there you go. Hope you like it. Thanks for hanging out with me. Bye-bye.